It's not about the value of your soul. It's about the value of you in the marketplace. There's always two pains in life. There's the pain of discipline or there's the pain of regret. It's not what happens that determines the quality or the quantity of your life. It's not what happens. And the reason is because what happens happens to about everybody. No different. The sun went down on all of us last night. A common event, a happening. And I found out that the same things can happen to two different people. One gets rich and one stays poor. Why is that? It's because it's not what happens, but rather it's what you do that changes everything. What's an area of your life right now that you really want to improve? What's an area that's important to improve? If your body's great, how about your career? If career's great, how about your relationships? Intimate one especially, or your kids, or your relationship with your creator, your spiritual side of your life, or is it your finances? Figure an area that really matters, decide on that area. I say to people, you've got to participate in your own rescue. You've got to retool yourself. Lasting change is different than a goal. You don't always get your goals, but you always get your standards. Everybody in life gets their musts. They don't get their shoulds. Most people have a list of shoulds, don't they? Don't you have a list of the shoulds, things you should do, you should follow through on, I, I should lose some weight, I should work out more, I should make more calls, I should respond more rapidly to my email, whatever, you know? I should get into the office earlier, I should be you know, more confident, whatever your should list is. People love to have their should list make, be met, but it's kind of like New Year's resolutions. If it does, it's really exciting, but if it doesn't, which is most of the time, eh, it's a little disappointing, but you kind of know it's not gonna happen. But when you decide something is a must for you, an absolute must, when you cut off any possible, you say, I'm gonna find the way or I'm gonna make the way. Human beings, when they resolve things, when they make a real resolution inside themselves, which is they raise the standard, they make it a must, they find the way. Everything in life is always changing. We don't have to work on change. Change is automatic, but progress is not. So if you wanna make real progress, then you really gotta look at your life in a different way. You gotta say, I gotta take control of this process and not just hope it's gonna work out like people do who make a resolution. My mom was a powerful woman, so she kicked my fourth father out, whose name I carry, and he adopted me. And when he went out, she decided it wasn't his side, so she kicked me out too by chasing me out with a knife. And I wasn't worried she was gonna stab me or anything, but I decided this is freedom. and I've gotta find a way to make my life work. But I had no money, I had a 1960 Volkswagen I worked $40 a week as a janitor to buy and pay for. And so I had no car, I had no money, I had no anything. I went and slept in a person's uh, laundry room and then I decided I've got to figure out what to do and I needed to feed my mind because I was so depressed, I was so overwhelmed. I'm missing my brother and sister and feeling just completely out of sorts. So I, I got on a bus and I traveled 14 miles, I remember because I ended up running it one time, uh, and I went to this bookstore and I bought this book called The Magic of Believing by Claudia Bristol. It's the first real book other than maybe Think and Grow Rich or Emerson's Essays. And I started on this journey of saying, every single day, I'm gonna feed my mind. I'm not going to hope good thoughts show up. I'm gonna read biographies. I'm gonna, I'm gonna find out what makes people tick. I'm gonna understand what makes me tick. And I, I wanted to read a book a day, but I didn't do that. I took a speed reading class and I read 700 books over seven years. And they were all personal development, human development, psychology, physiology. And then what I tried to do is take anything that I learned and apply it. And then when I applied it, you know, I was 5'1 in my sophomore year in high school. I'm six seven now. I tell people the difference is personal growth. Really. <laughs> but sincerely, I, 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 I became Mr. Solution because I wanted to help everybody. So I was this little fat guy, and I couldn't lose weight, and I lost weight. And all my buddies were like, how'd you do that? And I said, well, here's what I did. And they lost weight, and then we all got girls. And, and <laughs> that led to, as a young kid, you know, that led to where, you know, if you had a problem, I was Mr. Solution. Especially if you're a girl, I was more motivated to help you. So the breakthrough was really understanding the power of compressing decades into days. And if someone has spent decades of their life, and they compress it into a book, and you can read it in an hour or a few days, you have such an advantage because when you learn by your own experience, it's painful and it's slow. When you learn by other people's experience, everybody knows in the financial world, other people's money is leverage, right? Well, other people's experience is more powerful than other people's money because you can have the money and lose it. But if you get the experience, you can change it all. So I think that was the beginning for me and it set me on a lifelong path of hunger. You know, I've never lost my hunger. You know, you get on an airplane, what's the first thing they say? If we get into trouble, mask will come down, oxygen's there, and the first thing you gotta do is put it on your kid, right? No, why? 
they, who do they tell you to put it on? Yourself, you selfish bastard. What's the deal here, right? But it's because if we don't take care of ourselves, we can't tear them. So for leaders, what I always tell them is, it's you first. It starts with you, and it starts with your psychology. 80% of growing a business, if you look at what the chokehold is on a business, it's always the leader. And 80% of that chokehold is the psychology, and 20% is the mechanics. I mean, people in this room know the mechanics and strategies beyond what anybody on earth knows in their category. So it's really about you being in the state where you execute. It's like I always tell people, knowledge is not power, it's total BS. Knowledge is potential power. Execution trumps knowledge every day of the week, and so my life is, how do you get yourself to execute? And execution comes from learning to put yourself in that right state every day. What do these people need to get started? Why aren't they starting? We all know the answer is fear. But the difference with you guys or me or anybody who's followed through is we're more afraid of the, what life would be like if we don't follow through than the person who's willing to settle for what they got and kind of hope it'll change and maybe purchase something for the moment and then not follow through with it. It's almost like people, overachievers, have a little more fear. They're a little more afraid of missing out. They're afraid of not being there or they got a strong enough reason to follow through. So I'd say if you're looking at home, you want to give somebody some value, you go, where do I start? I'm sick of this. That's a damn good place. Once you break through, then it just becomes a game. The people that are getting your products have not yet broken through in most cases. The breakthrough happens by conditioning your mind every day, by feeding it a role model, a story. It's putting yourself in a peak state where you fall through by getting physically strong. It's creating a little ritual of doing a little bit each day, and then you get momentum. But the most important thing of all is what we started out with. Why? Why is it a must for you? It doesn't have to be you're against the wall, but it has to be something you're hungry for because the only difference in people is hunger. And if you're not hungry, get around people that are hungry and something will hit you. So people can change their standard by getting around where it's better. People can change their standard by getting associated with what's true, like the bills they got to solve, the problems they got to do it. Or they can do it because they're excited because it's something new they want to take on. Everyone's different, but they got to find the why and they got to come up with some daily rituals to get them going and just do a step at a time. That's where you get momentum. People that succeed, when an opportunity is there, they trust. They trust. If I'm going to thrive, this is here in my life for a purpose. Life isn't happening to me. Life is happening for me. And even this pain or challenge or this opportunity is something I've got to find a way to make use of. I need to make a decision and I need to do something right now to move things forward in the direction of what I really want for my life. Even if I don't know the final destination, I need to move in that direction. I need to take some form of action. Most people, they have all these visions. Maybe they start to make a little sort of decision, but they don't make a real decision because they don't act on it. And if you don't act on it, your ideas, your dreams will die in your mind. They'll die in your lips. And think about it. Most people in North America, around the world, the Western world, are they truly fit, strong, and healthy? Do they truly have a relationship that's totally passionate? Do they love their work? Are they economically free? The vast majority of you and I both know the answer is no. If you want to be like most people, then what you got to do is figure out how to survive. If you want to lead, you got to thrive. And you have that capability, and you're probably already doing it. I'm probably speaking to the choir to some extent. If you're still watching this right now, you've turned me off as a raging maniac who's on a rant. Because that's what I am. I'm on a rant right now. A rant to call to your soul to say, no matter how great life is, take it to the next level. Find a way to thrive on the very things that stop other people in the tracks. Thrive on what produces fear inside you and in other people. Thrive on something that you envision that you have a higher purpose for. Thrive by being decisive. Thrive by taking massive action. And if the massive action doesn't work, if what you try doesn't work, just simply try something else. And if that doesn't work, try something else. If that doesn't work, try something else until you find what works. Now you can speed that up by modeling, by finding somebody who's already getting the results that you want to get in your life. Somebody already has lost 30 pounds and kept it off. They aren't lucky, it's been five years. Somebody who started with nothing and now they're financially free and their family has an extraordinary quality of life. Why not figure out what they do? Somebody who truly is happy, not because everything's going their way, because they find a deeper meaning and a richness in everything around themselves. Whether it be their children or nature or even problems. Because obviously if we had no problems, we feel dead inside. Problems can either destroy you or call you to become more. If you look at the, the biggest challenges in your life, if you brought certainty to it, if you brought a vision beyond the problem, if you made some decision of what you're going to change, even if you didn't know how, and if you took immediate action with enough intensity, massive action, you probably found the cure-all. You probably found a way to adapt and get where you want to be. That's what thriving is really all about. But the ultimate thriving is not just breaking through and making things happen. 
the ultimate thriving for this year or any year of your life is to remember the secret to living is giving. It's to, as corny as that sounds, it's to connect to something bigger than yourself. And it can be done so easily. It can be done right there at home. Instead of running past your kids, looking at your phone, it's stopping connecting. It's getting kissing your spouse in a way where those sparks happen, like when you're first met, instead of how you doing and moving on. Most of us are moving so fast, trying to manage our lives that we're not thriving. Thriving comes with depth. You're not going to find thriving in a friendship that happens in milliseconds online. Nothing wrong with it. It's great connection. But a depth of a real friendship is not your Facebook friend. It's not the same as being with somebody and actually having your full attention, not while you're monitoring what's going on on your cell phone. Just the experience of being with somebody. But contributing your caring, contributing your interest, contributing you know, in a simple way, finding some way to give love, attention, care, joy or happiness to any human being. It doesn't have to be working in a soup kitchen, but that can be pretty wonderful too. Volunteering an hour in a month, an hour in a week can change a person's life. But it can be outside world, it can also be really on the inside world. If you want to thrive, then you got to remember life's not about me, it's about we. You already know it. It's in your soul.